Hi, my name is Anis Naeem. I'm an art director and production designer working in both the film and games industries. I currently work at Riot Games as an art director and we'll be taking a look at how to make this. So let's get started. We'll discuss a lot of the cloth simming tools. There's a really great plugin that I enjoy called Simply Cloth. You can of course do all of this without that plugin, but I'll be demonstrating how to use that plugin uh, or add-on I should say. Then we'll be looking at the cloth brush, which is free and comes with Blender. And it's really quite nice to add some really uh, deep, a lot of details that you would normally have to sculpt in. And finally, we'll just take a quick look at sculpting some additional details on top of the collapsed mesh that is, you know, it's got all the sim stuff that looks quite natural. So this is the sort of the final result that I got uh, working on this tutorial. There are, you know, I've developed it quite a bit since the sketch, but you can see the main idea is there. And it was, it really accelerated my time that I would spend in 3D trying to figure out proportions. And I could just get right to work on setting in the base, you know, putting in a base geo, and then using two major plugins, or three, I should say, Hard Ops and Box Cutter, they kind of come in as a bundle you can buy from Astro Xeon and Simply Cloth. All of these plugins you technically do not need because Blender's you know, uh, functions are all right here. You can do Booleans and so on. Uh, Heavy Poly Script, which is free, allows you to do some of the live Booleans for free. Uh, but I would highly suggest you get these if you want to create something like this because uh, the Cl Simply Cloth makes it super easy and Hard ups make it makes it also super easy to array uh, things around your object and create booleans that would otherwise take quite a few clicks to set up every single time, which becomes a headache. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so let's make. I'm going to delete our other collection here. Let's just make a new collection. Call this geometry bot to just for myself and put our cursor back in the origin shift a square and I'm just going to SX shift D SZ Z SX and I'm just going to get this here at this point make my life easy so now SY so let's take uh, actually this bit here and extend it outwards and go to face mode, extend this here, SX, great. So um, just going to take, that's bizarre, why isn't it letting me select faces? There we go. It's got, do I have x-ray mode? Oh, sorry, I have x-ray mode on, that's why. Um, so we have our basic block in. I'm just going to take this and move it here. Great, and cool. So we, it's kind of what I wanted. Now I will take and do the same exact thing here. Shift A, Q, S, S, Z, and kind of put it here. S, Y, I want it to be a little longer on top so the cylinder has a place to attach. And it's a little off center right now so I'm just going to move it and then place shift right click and place a cylinder right there and where's the cylinder there we go just press D I don't want this many sides so let's do 18 RZ S S Y or X I should say great and then that's our metallic part sorry um, I'm going to make a new cylinder and 
X, Shift A. We do need all that geo. Press D because um, we need it to do the cloth stuff that we will be doing. S Y or X. S D or Shift D I should say. And S X. S X. There we go. And this is quite a always a bit of a you could put a bezier curve here and skin it but since we're already here shift d r z move this down or r control i should say to rotate press x here and take this shift n to flip the normal take uh, control space go to here control go here control shift b and you see how it connected it quite nicely so let's control Z we were too far in let's uh, go to bring it right about there so it has some room before it goes down so control shift B and then just press D and merge factor or number of cuts smoothness there we go we just want to make sure that these vertices here aren't colliding because when you go into cloth this is, this will cause you a huge issue but you also want to make sure that you have the the bend that you want right so let's control Z this looks like it's too high uh, or too low it's going too far let's do the beginning and end of the bend and then from here it'll be straight so control shift B again that's much better that's exactly what I was looking for so let's do cuts we can reduce the amount perfect and from here you just go back into poly mode shift space and extrude perfect so we have what we wanted and i'm not going to go through and do the exact entire robot but you get the idea because i want to focus on the cloth aspect at this point so i'm just going to pause and be right back Okay, so this is the cloth modeling section, and I'll just play this. This is simulated live, and you can see that I simply bent this around our mesh that we created for the shoulder. So let me just bring back the rest of the mesh here. You can see what I have here. And the way I began this was I took the initial shoulder geo, which was here, I duplicated it so let's recreate those steps uh, I duplicated it and just so I have the original geometry in case I want to go back to it and then I uh, duplicated it again this is just me being paranoid and uh, I go here and I click subdivide but before you do that you always want to come into the tight areas here and make sure that none of this is colliding because if you add additional geometry it'll be much harder to control. If there is you just click control space, alt shift click and shift G to slide it so it relaxes that area a little bit. Shift G, shift G, shift G. Okay now the other thing you want is to have even geometry throughout this so the spacing here needs to be as even as possible um, so it looks like and uh, I should mention that it should be as square as possible so let's shift G shift G and I'm not going to go into too much detail because that could take up a lot of time so I'm just going to now go here and uh, select an edge control R and just visually try to make some squares here and then That should be it. Um, let's take this, shift G, shift G. And let's now take this, subdivide, right click and subdivide, and then just press D to bring it up again and you can subdivide more. But I think one subdivision should be good enough. Let's take this and shift G a little bit. So give it some room. Great, so we have this now how do we go from there to here, right? 
Well, you just take this, and this is again my paranoia. You don't actually need to duplicate this, but I'm just going to Shift D, Escape, and let's name that two. And now we have our simply cloth available here. Let's take our Z isolate. So what I've done is I've actually removed these inside parts here because I we don't need that geo. What you do need to do is take go into edge mode, select this edge here, shift D and on the Z axis. Sorry, I was doing it on the Y, so I had to undo. Shift D, and on the Z axis, pull it down. Shift, Control, Shift, click to select the entire loop. So I'll put it into material so you can see better. Shift D, and move it on the X axis, just a little bit away um, on, on, on its respective axis. Go back to Control Object, uh, Control Space Object, create cloth. So now it's created a cloth, but if you press play, it just falls down. That's okay. Go back to your shift left arrow key to go back to your first keyframe. Um, so what you want to do is first and foremost, go into your um, physics properties here, and this will already be set up for you. Go all the way down, turn off gravity. So now you have this happening, right? And sometimes this creates a keyframe, so make sure you just clear a keyframe. Um, and then you can turn it off so now it's not moving but now nothing's happening that's okay we'll set this to pressure and immediately it swells up but now it starts floating away and that's okay now go into edge mode click this and this or actually sorry first click this and this and click create new pins so now these stay in place but the rest of the cloth still floats away that's okay now go into your first edge here and then here and now click create sewing and now it's connected it created a vertex grip somewhere in here and I'm just going to clear keyframes here so it doesn't turn the gravity back up here and turn that back down and now create create sewing great now if you press play beautiful but now it's sagging so how do we take care of that that's okay let's go back shift left click and somehow it created gravity again so clear keyframes let's keep that down to zero and there we go so now it's not sagging but it looks kind of boring it doesn't have as many folds so you can kind of amp up the folds here amp up the wrinkles reduce the stiffness and see what that looks like so shift left click and again and you can also in, uh, enable self-collision so you won't get the sharp fold in there hopefully great that's looking a lot better we're get, starting to get something that resembles a bit of folding happening and the nice thing about this now is you can just go in and really add pockets um, of like additional stuff so i'm just going to select this and make it tweak Oops, sorry. Uh, maybe let's just select circle to make our life easier. So um, let's take this. And I'm actually going to duplicate this. Once again, Shift D, Escape, and just turn that off. Just so, go back into, just in case I change my mind later and I don't like the pockets, I don't have to delete the geo manually and try to reconstruct it. So Shift Space here. Let's just do a design this way and this way, maybe this, and then this, and then shift space to extrude. Great. And press space. There you go. You have these nice little pockets. And yours may have flat shading on, so just right click and click sh shade smooth. And go into your um, object data properties under normals. You can also do this. So auto smooth and turn this up or down. Um, and that should help you out a little bit there. Um, let's go back, shift left. And now this looks a little stiff. So let's take, tweak. Let's take, just add 
a little bit of geometry here for it to work with so it doesn't look so stiff. And that should swell up the pockets in a bit more of a less rigid way. Looks like it's not. But that's okay because we have the cloth tool and the sculpting tools later on down the line. So quality steps. We can, of course, uh, go back in here and add more geometry and refine this further and really try to simulate it. But we won't. Let's, let's decrease our shrinking, which actually increases the amount of cloth elasticity, I should say. There we go. You see there seems to be more cloth hanging there. Now you could create kind of a ring around this and make it a collision and collide with it to shape it and mold it. But this gives you the general gist. And now we can jump into the next part, which is cloth sculpting with the cloth brush and just using some of the sculpting tools. Okay, so this is the cloth modeling section. And I'll just play this. This is simulated live and you can see that I simply bent this around our mesh that we created for the shoulder. So let me just bring back the rest of the mesh here. You can see what I have here. And the way I began this was I took the initial shoulder geo, which was here. I duplicated it. So let's recreate those steps. Uh, I duplicated it. Uh, just so I have the original geometry in case I want to go back to it. And then I uh, duplicated it again. This is just me being paranoid. And uh, I go here and I click subdivide. But before you do that, you always want to come into the tight areas here and make sure that none of this is colliding because if you add additional geometry it'll be much harder to control. If there is, you just click control space, alt shift click and shift G to slide it so it relaxes that area a little bit. Shift G, shift G, shift G. Okay. Now the other thing you want is to have even geometry throughout this. So the spacing here needs to be as even as possible. Um, so it looks like, and uh, I should mention that it should be as square as possible. So let's shift G, shift G, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because that could take up a lot of time. So I'm just going to now go here and uh, select an edge, control R, and just visually try to make some squares here and then That should be it. Um, let's take this, Shift-G, Shift-G, and let's now take this, subdivide, right click and subdivide, and then just press D to bring it up again, and you can subdivide more, but I think one subdivision should be good enough. Let's take this and Shift-G a little bit, so give it some room. Great, so we have this. now. How do we go from there to here, right? Well, you just take this, and this is again my paranoia. You don't actually need to duplicate this, but I'm just going to Shift D, Escape, and let's name that two. And now we have our Simply Cloth available here. Let's take our Z Isolate. So what I've done is I've actually removed these inside parts here because I we don't need that geo. What you do need to do is take go into edge mode, select this edge here, shift D and on the Z axis, sorry, I was doing it on the Y so I had to undo. Shift D and on the Z axis pull it down. Shift control shift click to select the entire loop. So I'll put it into material so you can see better. Shift D and move it on the x-axis, just a little bit away um, on, on, on its respective axis. Go back to control object, uh, control space object, create cloth. So now it's created a cloth, but if you press play, it just falls down. That's okay. Go back to your shift left arrow key to go back to your first keyframe. Um, 
So what you want to do is first and foremost go into your um, physics properties here and this will already be set up for you. Go all the way down, turn off gravity. So now you have this happening, right? And sometimes this creates a keyframe, so make sure you just clear keyframe. Um, and then you can turn it off, so now it's not moving, but now nothing's happening. That's okay. We'll set this to pressure, and immediately it swells up, but now it starts floating away, and that's okay. Now go into edge mode, click this and this, or actually, sorry, first click this and this, and click create new pins. So now these stay in place, but the rest of the cloth still floats away. That's okay. Now go into your first edge here and then here and now click create sewing and now it's connected. It created a vertex grip somewhere in here and I'm just going to clear keyframes here so it doesn't turn the gravity back up here and turn that back down. And now create, create sewing. Great. Now if you press play, beautiful. But now it's sagging. So how do we take care of that? That's okay. Let's go back, shift left click, and somehow it created gravity again. So clear keyframes. Let's keep that down to zero. And there we go. So now it's not sagging, but it looks kind of boring. It doesn't have as many folds. So you can kind of amp up the folds here, amp up the wrinkles, reduce the stiffness, and see what that looks like. So shift left click and again and you can also in, uh, enable self collision so you won't get the sharp fold in there hopefully great that's looking a lot better we're get, starting to get something that resembles a bit of folding happening and the nice thing about this now is you can just go in and really add pockets um, of like additional stuff so I'm just going to select this uh, and make it tweak oops sorry uh, maybe let's just select circle to make our life easier so um, let's take this and I'm actually going to duplicate this once again shift D escape and just turn that off just so go back into just in case I change my mind later and I don't like the pockets I don't have to delete the geo manually and try to reconstruct it so shift space here let's just do a design this way and this way maybe this and then this and then shift space to extrude great and press space there you go you have these nice little pockets and yours may have flat shading on, so just right click and click sh Shade Smooth. And go into your um, Object Data Properties under Normals. You can also do this. So Auto Smooth and turn this up or down. Um, and that should help you out a little bit there. Um, let's go back, Shift Left. And now this looks a little stiff, so let's take Tweak. Let's take, just add a little bit of geometry here for it to work with so it doesn't look so stiff. And that should swell up the pockets in a bit more of a less rigid way. Looks like it's not, but that's okay because we have the cloth tool and the sculpting tools later on down the line. So quality steps we can of course uh, go back in here and add more geometry and refine this further and really try to simulate it but we won't let's let's decrease our shrinking which actually increases the amount of cloth elasticity I should say there we go you see there seems to be more cloth hanging there no you could create kind of a ring around this and make it a collision and collide with it to shape it and mold it. But this gives you the general gist. And now we can go jump into the next part, which is cloth sculpting with the cloth brush and just using some of the sculpting tools. But before we do that, we need to actually apply this. And the way we do that is if you go into the modifiers, you have all these uh, modifiers. I actually upped under viewport 
uh, subdivisions, I upped the from 0 to 1 and this actually gave it more geometry and then you'll see sometimes this happens and this is just a problem with Blender's physics itself. You'll just need to kind of like change a setting here and it should reset. There we go. And go back to simulating normally. So you take this and uh, it's given it a bit more volume here with the pockets, a few more wrinkles and so on. So all we need to do now is bake our cache essentially. So you do that in your settings here, internal springs. There are all these other settings that you can play with but it's too much to go into. So uh, cache and you simply click bake and then this should bake it down and then I'll see you in the sculpting section. So I'll make this super uh, concise. We have our model here that's been applied with its physics and simulation. So I'm just going to duplicate this just so I don't lose the initial sim and control space, go into sculpt mode, press N, go into tool and turn off symmetry under X. And we have this. So I like sculpting with Dino Topo, which is right here. And that kind of reduces, let's go up to eight. Let's go to 16. There we go. And let's go to 20. Just trying to get something similar to the concentration of polys here. And that way we don't lose it's kind of an even distribution and it recalculates every time. There we go, that's good enough. So I'm just going to right click shade smooth so we have a smooth view instead of the faceted and now we can sculpt and it should look pretty good. So uh, of course we can go in with just this tool here and you know take all these tools and add some creases. So um, one thing I, I like to do and let me actually shift V new material, go here, change my material to a bit darker so I can actually see what's happening. And uh, sculpt, and you can you go into crease and then right click, strength, right? So now you can go in and add in cut lines, right? and uh, turn down the radius and there's the crease tool which I love using then the pinch tool the grab snake hook pose and draw and draw sharp so they all kind of do the same things here and I'll just take the sharp tool and pronounce some additional you know edges here and of course we need to keep our dinotopo on it keeps turning it off Shade smooth. Let's go back into sculpt. I turn it off again. So let's turn it back on. And oh, we can just set smooth shading here. So there we go. Now I'm just going to um, let's take our crease brush and add in a design element here. So maybe it does something like this. There we go. And now you simply take draw sharp and go back in and do all this, right? Of course, you could spend your time, add some more geo, do all these other things, but you get the idea here that you can very quickly add in some details that are look like that took you a lot more time. And once you zoom out, you're like, oh, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, of course, you know, with drawing, you can go in and add in some additional details here. It look like maybe it's like some sort of not a screw, but something, some Velcro inside, or some something holding it and, and keeping it tight there so it doesn't come apart. 
Um, it could be a piece of metal that's stuck on top, some magnetic thing. Um, so the other thing that I really wanted to show you all was the cloth tool. And this one, it can be a little hard to control, so I usually use the, the mask option here. So you'll need overlays on for that. And I'll just turn up, let's say I just want to use the cloth tool in this area. So control I, right? And the cloth brush, I mean. And you can very quickly see how this is, you know, creating, let's turn off overlays just so you can see. You can very quickly see how powerful this is. So I'll just kind of like, in combination with everything else, I'll use this and I'll sculpt everything on top and then I'll like kind of add a cloth sort of feel to everything and just add some wrinkles and kind of go back and smooth it out and maybe add some additional detail like maybe there's a uh, you know let's do overlays again and material and we need our mask gone so this box mask control to remove that go back up here maybe there is some sort of bulge here you know um, some mechanical bits that are metallic that are all inside here and now you can go back in with the cloth brush and you know play with all these settings the cloth mask the cloth damping simulation limit you even have um, topology auto masking and uh, under the stroke you can set it to space or drag dot or dots so um, this is quite nice but again you have to lower the strength probably and just play with it subtly and this is where masking comes into play uh, quite a bit so that's why I was saying that you need to mask out areas so it doesn't impact the entire thing and you kind of lose control but once I'm kind of done with it I'll make the brush really large and kind of like smush things around for the organic bit and uh, you can get some really nice results and sorry this is a bit too much but you get the idea